Sean Ross from Cultaholic, joined by Sam from Cultaholic. Sam from Cultaholic, how are you today? I'm doing all right, mate. I'm doing all right. How are you? It's good to hear. I'm very well, thank you very much. The bus is pulling up to the stop for Newstown, the town where all the news lives. Let's have a look at the street where the news has shops and things, shall we? First of all, have WWE renamed Backlash 2019. Second of all, have WWE offered huge money to potentially departing stars. And finally, the raw money in the bank ladder match participants have been revealed. So first of all, we have the news that Backlash 2019 has potentially had its name removed and replaced, Sam. Brace yourself, right? right. Brace yourself. By stomping grounds. As in MC stomping. As in Meti Mission. You are just saying oh. words that I don't know what they mean. You know what Meti Mission is. I Ross. have no idea. Is that You're the song Jackson? Yeah. The 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 Metro stops. North Shields like. Meadowell, Percy Main. Well, a crime has been committed already because they have released a poster on the arena's website and There's... Seth Rollins isn't in the middle. Seth really? Rollins should be in the middle. I haven't he seen has the poster. This... I'd, I'd seen the advert. Yeah. There's a little video that the um, I don't know if WWE produced it or the arenas produced it, but it contains uh, AJ Styles, Seth Rollins, Charlotte Flair, Kofi Kingston, Becky Lynch, and Braun Strowman. They're all in it. It doesn't confirm if they're definitely going to be in the card, because obviously card's subject to change. Um, and uh, yeah, there's Randy Orton versus Roman Reigns. That's the only confirmed match. I'm assuming there was a second one, Sam. There was a second was one. Was there? On the official arena's website. Right. On the arena's official's website. I'm, gonna, I'm just drunk here. Um, <laughs> the second match was a winner takes all match, I think it was, between Seth Rollins and Kofi Kingston, confirming oh, wow. that the matches they put on there are just placeholders until the actual card is announced. Yeah, that seems a bit of a wild one. Yeah. This, this quick after mania for it to be winner takes all. Um, I mean, we we've seen it already. We can't have two double champs. This yeah. is going to be mental. Why not? But to set the scene here, for those of you who don't know, Backlash was supposed to happen earlier on in June, it was a week or so after yeah. the first Saudi Arabia show of the year. But of course, because of the Saudi Arabia show and the nature of that deal and how bad it is, you can't really have a show called Backlash happening soon after that and get away with it, I was going to say, do you not think they might be being a little bit tongue-in-cheek and really poking the bear and renaming the Saudi Arabia show to Backlash? Because uh, oh, the, the greatest be a lot ever of backlash. backlash around that show in general. <laughs> the greatest um, Backlash. But so, yeah, yeah, it was it was supposed to come from uh, San Diego, California, but now it's going to be in the Tacoma Dome in Tacoma, Washington. So yeah, last week it was announced by somebody I can't remember who, probably Sean Ross, but Dave Meltzer. That's he normally does it. Uh, the show had been rescheduled; it had been pushed back a couple of weeks or a week or two. I can't remember. Uh, June the twenty third in the Tacoma Dome in Washington D.C. No, Washington State. Washington Seattle. State. Yeah, where Daniel Bryan's from. Nirvana. Grunge Same music, thing. Potato, garden. potato. Sorry, America. Um, so yeah. I think it's a wise decision to uh, rename it. I don't like the name at all. Uh, the, they're bad at coming up with names. At the, the, thing, the thing I'm, I'm interested in is, you know, if this is the end of Backlash, if Backlash is done and gone, uh, and we don't see it again, I don't know if I'd be sad, because we're moving forward into this whole new thing. Vince has obviously came out, and we all came out around the, the big uh, call around the investors and everything like that. Um, that. They're moving forward into, like, a new WWE. So, like... It would make sense to have new pay-per-view names, new gimmick matches, new just like a whole new clean slate. So I would like that, Sam. I, I could, think I hate yeah. this. This keep keep the big five because obviously now you've got Money in the Bank is one of the big five. So like, and that's a great great event always. So like, mm. I just think, yeah, maybe maybe just rename some of the the more played out, longer running pay-per-views. I mean, this is the second time in three years we've had a new era in WWE, but not much changes, does it? Yeah. But it is tinged with sadness but, because I'm a ruthless aggression era kid and Batlash yeah. with the hooks. Oh, the oh. hooks, man, is so if good. If they're going to just do Batlash, bring back the hooks, do it properly. <laughs> but, like, I, I just think, yeah, maybe this could be the start. Because, as you've said, like, it's been the new era over and over again. But, like, maybe this time, maybe it's actually going to change. So we're just going to have to wait and see. I wouldn't think so. But Stomping Grounds is a bad name, isn't it? Let's just call a spade a spade. <laughs> And secondly, we have a story that developed throughout the day yesterday. So first of all, Jim Ross appeared on Busted Open Radio and revealed that I think he was snooping around the WWE rosters, thinking, oh, who's, who might be available to come in AEW? Because, yeah. of course, Jim Ross is not only a commentator, but is a senior advisor for AEW. I mean, there's no better man for the job, isn't there? Yeah. Best talent relations guy in the business ever, so they say. Um, and he was told that some undercard talent had been paid half a million dollars just to stay in the company. They weren't being used on television. This was WWE saying, here's some money. Don't go anywhere else. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, from what we were just talking about before we started rolling the camera, I assumed, just given the nature of how it was phrased, that it was a singles guy. 
It was somebody who hadn't been on TV for a while, but you've got another theory. So later on in the same day, yesterday being Monday, Sean Ross Sap of Fightful revealed that the revival had been offered half a million dollars per year for five years to stay in WWE, and as of when he released that story, they hadn't accepted it yet. I mean, that's two and a half million each over five years. It's pretty big money. If someone offered me that to stay in a job I wasn't happy at, I would probably take it. Yeah, but it's I guess it's the way up of if they were going to go to AEW, um, there's a lot of money there too. That's got to be the big yeah. fear, surely. And, you know, merchandise sales, everything like that, I'm assuming there'll be structured deals for that stuff at AEW as well, just as there is at WWE, but maybe it might be a little bit more favourable. We don't know any of that stuff yet, but I don't know. Just... Yeah, like, do you reckon Vince is starting to get a bit You see, my, my personal opinion is, in, in the grand scheme of everything, AEW is not a threat to WWE because WWE have the monopoly on everything that they're so, no, that's it. Like you they're say so wrestling, big. You say wrestling to anybody that doesn't watch wrestling, they immediately think of stuff like Hulk Hogan, The Rock, Steve Austin, they think of WWE. Like, WWE has their hands on everything so tightly gripped and whatnot. Nobody with no amount of money, Tony Khan, Shai Khan, anything, yeah. they can't, like... Make them go away. I mean, for instance, you've got Sinclair Broadcasting, who are worth, I think, more than Vince. They run Ring of Honor. Yeah. I, well, like, having more money doesn't always equate to being able to take them on. But I think if anybody's got a fair chance, it might be AEW. I'm quite yeah. hopeful about it. But yeah, but uh, like, AEW do have a lot of money. They have yep. been making a lot of noise. They've been making a few good signings. You know, you've got packing people like that coming yep. in. Um, they are going to make a lot of noise. And I think that's one thing Vince McMahon doesn't like because he likes to dominate. That and the fanfare around the fact if they're going to make so much noise and then they're going to bring in guys that were maybe underutilized in fans' eyes at WWE uh, and they, they start succeeding and become megastars elsewhere, he's not going to like that. I don't think he's going to like that one little bit. And you look at the, the Young Bucks, I know they've got the feud with the Lucha Bros coming up, just kick yep. things off with double or nothing, but the one match that everybody wants to see is the Young Bucks versus the Revival, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, it's been something that everybody's clamoured for for God knows how long now. So, just want to see it. Just yeah, so do I. Don't take the money, boys. Tony Khan, It's really offer irresponsible them. of me to, <laughs> to tell you not to take money when you've probably got families and, no, you know, lots of things to worry about, but don't take, we just want to see that match, It's simple boys. maths for Tony Khan. Offer them, Tony, I know you're watching. Big offer tone. them five, uh, <laughs> half a million and one dollar. Just a little bit more <laughs> for five years. Five dollars more, that'll get them, I guarantee it. And next up we have Alexa Bliss who kicked off last night's Monday Night Raw by announcing the four men's competitors for the Money in the Bank ladder match and they are Sam. They are Braun Strowman, Ricochet, Drew McIntyre and Baron Corbin. And Baron Corbin came out after Alexa Bliss announced it and was like, I'm going to win it, I'm going to win it twice, I'm going to be two-time winner. And Ricochet was like... Well, no, what if you're a two-time loser? Because remember, your <laughs> passion was awful, and it was a bit back and forward. But of course, they're going to have to face off against four guys from SmackDown. It's a little bit of a you know, Braun and Drew and Corbin. It's pretty, it's a pretty bloody beefy hard match. Hard hitting, that beefy match. <laughs> yeah. You'd have to think there'd be a few more high flyers on the SmackDown half of it to make. I it reckon so. Yeah. A proper Money in the Bank ladder match. I'll I mean, tell you what I didn't like though. What is that? There was no qualifying matches. It was just like Alexa Bliss going, "Oh, you're in. You deserve it. You deserve it. You, like everybody gets a Money in the Bank, like like Oprah." Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh. Alexa Bliss and Oprah. But then later on in the night, she came back out and announced that, Sam, who the women are. They are Natalia, Dana Brooke, Naomi, and Alexa Bliss. She she put herself in the match. Good on her. Yeah. Is she a healer? She's a baby face these days, she, isn't she? She's sort of like, she's, I guess, an anti-hero-esque. Yeah. Like, you love to hate her, but she's also really good. But I hope Dana Brooke wins. It's her time. It's her time. It's her time. Did you see WrestleMania? My time. She was the most over competitor on the entire WrestleMania card, <laughs> kickoff show and main show. The crowd loved her. They did. They really popped for it. Not ironically at all. Yeah. <laughs> her promos have been outstanding recently. And but not... there's there's another bit of news. So like we'll we'll just go down the card. So also on the card you've got Seth Rollins versus AJ Styles for the Universal Championship. You've got Lacey Evans versus Becky Lynch for the Raw Women's Title. Becky pulling double duty going up against Charlotte later in the night for the SmackDown Women's Title. And then you've got Roman Reigns versus Elias, and then Ross, and then... Basically, The Miz was wrestling against Bobby Lashley, and he got distracted by a big old picture of George. George! Yeah, and then after he lost to Lashley, out came the best in the world, Shane McMahon, beat him down, choked him out, and The Miz was like, no, I want a match against you. It's not just any match. It's going to be a cage match. So, a salad steel yeah. cage. Yeah, salad steel cage. Best in the world, Shane McMahon versus The Miz. 
You can see why people want to leave WWE, can't you? <laughs> Do we need to see Shane McMahon wrestle again against The Miz? I guess it's a fun story. He'll go it? off but the top of the cage, though. It's going to be good. Oh, He's going to do some does. really cool stuff. Yeah. But it must be frustrating for actual wrestlers to see Shane McMahon getting time like that in a steel cage match. Yeah, but the roster's so deep, isn't it? Like, it's just such a hard thing to do. Yeah. It's looking like a good card, though, so far. How many, yeah. how many more matches can they add, really? I don't know. Like, but... I guess Balor would be in action for the Intercontinental. Probably against so. Ali. Maybe, Maybe yeah. Ooh, that'd, that'd be, be nice. a nice match. Or Almas. Or do a three-way. Samoa Joe. Oh. oh. God knows what might happen. Anything can happen in the World Wrestling Federation. Entertainment. Federation. WWE. Thanks for watching. Let us know what you think in the comments below. You can follow us on Twitter at Cultaholic. You can find us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash Cultaholic. And if you enjoy what we do here at Cultaholic, you can play us through our Patreon page, patreon.com forward slash Cultaholic. Hit subscribe and join us.